Black Ops 6, the newest upcoming entry in the Call of Duty franchise, just got its first real in-game trailer. Now, we already had the reveal of multiplayer and even zombies, but this is the first time that we're getting something from in the game itself. This being the cutscene to open the first map, Terminus. Fittingly, this map takes place on Terminus Island. Now, before I get into my proper breakdown, I'm going to go ahead and just let the trailer play for you guys, and then when I come back, we'll start going into depth. Maya. She's with me. Breaking you out was my plan. So you're welcome. Heck, you sick son of a bitch! You're supposed to be dead. Relax, Major Carver. All of us here have a common enemy. The guy who locked you up. The guy who... stole my life's work. Edward Richtofen. What do you say we find him and kill him? Huh? Let's get out of here. That wasn't the fucking deal. We're not going anywhere till we find my brother. Look, it'll take me some time to get their helos thrown up, and we do kind of hope. Okay, Raptor One, go look at the landing pad. Peck, Strauss, hold up in the guard station. I want Richtofen's coordinates. Go to store power, and then locate this woman's brother. Now that you've gotten a chance to review the trailer, let's get into some of the actually interesting stuff. First of all, the location. It is Terminus Island in the Philippine Sea. Now, for some of you, that name Terminus might sound familiar if you played Modern Warfare Zombies. The mercenaries from that game, Terminus Outcomes, were led by one Jack Fletcher. And we know from some of the documents that have released that Jack Fletcher used to work on Terminus Island. Interestingly, during the years 1991, he was there until he was discharged in 1993. Now, there is some oddness there, given that there's a zombie apocalypse happening on this island in 1991. How did he keep working there till 1993? But maybe that's something we'll find out in the map itself. Additionally, the trailer lists that the map is taking place at 0300 or 3 a.m. This is interesting because if I have my time zones right, 3 a.m. in the Philippines should equal around 1 or 2 p.m. in West Virginia, where the other map, Liberty Falls, is said to take place. This seems to line up as we have some audio intel from Modern Warfare Zombies that says our announcer, handler, friend, whatever you want to call it, Miller, was there during the Liberty Falls outbreak and was in school when it happened. So 1 or 2 p.m. makes pretty good sense. Throughout the first half of the trailer, we hear a poem. This poem is known as Boots by Rudyard Kipling. The recording playing in the background is from 1929, recorded by Peter Dawson. You can find this recording at the Library of Congress website, which I 
I have linked down in the description. The poem recounts a British soldier slowly going mad during the Second Boer War, with the reader's voice becoming more strained as it goes on. A former Navy SEAL named Ward Carroll has stated that the poem was used at the Sear Navy Academy to train US soldiers to survive if they're quote captured and tortured. This is relevant to our four characters, who have been imprisoned on Terminus Island for five years since the events of Forsaken back in Black Ops Cold War. Over the last month or so, we have gotten some reveals through the website thetruthdies.com. It's a sort of TV where you can flick through the channels and find some important information like the reveal of the Gobblegums or the new perk, Melee Macchiato. On one of these channels, we saw a news report about a massive leak from the CIA about Project Janus. These leaked documents talked about Ernst Duffer, who used to work at a Berlin political prison by the name of Hohen Schonhausen. I, I don't speak very good German. That probably sounded terrible. While this place now is a memorial, back during the Cold War, it was a political prison of East Berlin. Fitting then that as we cut to the next shot, we see Ernst Duffer guarding our crew of Grigory Weaver, Mackenzie Carver, Oscar Strauss, and Elizabeth Gray. On the screen in front of Duffer is a logo that looks similar to the Forsaken's containment module from Cold War. Veterans of Call of Duty will remember that back in Black Ops 3, this model was used to represent Sophia. Now, we know from the truthdies.com that Duffer is also interrogating the crew, with Weaver noted as an anchor point for the team, and that without a purpose, he's become broken, which we'll see in a moment. Next, we see Carver and Gray doing push-ups in their cells as the poem rises in intensity. Now, it's understood that physical activity is one of the best ways to withstand psychological torture. According to a doctor of psychology, whose name I will not try to pronounce as I don't want to mispronounce it, but it will be on screen now. He lists physical activity alongside regular task setting and music. Remember those for later. Also listed is love, caring for others. We know both Weaver and Gray cared greatly for Samantha Maxis. Alongside their hatred for Richtofen, this likely keeps them focused. We see Weaver motionless in his cell, staring at Richtofen's name. This is the brokenness that I mentioned earlier, with Weaver's disassociation. He's without any purpose. A quote from HealthyPlace.com reads, As the gap between the I and the me deepens, disassociation and alienation increase. The subject that, under torture, was forced into the position of pure object has lost his or her sense of interiority, intimacy, and privacy. Now, this could be important given what we see on Weaver's walls, tallies of the days, another set task to focus on, as well as art, another form of torture resistance. This art is, at first, of weapons, and a strange drawing of what looks like a portal or vaguely like a sigil for Modern Warfare 3 zombies. As it cuts to the second wall, we see far more tallies, framing the name Richtofen. Some have said this is a reference to the shrine in Shangri-La, but I'm not really convinced. On the right is the yellow sign, a symbol a symbol denoting Haster from the Cthulhu Mythos. The symbol is from The King in Yellow, a book that actually predates Lovecraft and was only associated after the fact. The symbol is what is known as a cognito hazard, the definition of which is on screen right now. Those who see it are set on the path of self-destruction. In the Cthulhu Mythos, however, it is a protective symbol. I believe this is the correct version because on the other side is the Elder Sign, also from the Cthulhu Mythos. I can't seem to find where the symbol comes from in universe, but it appears to somehow be a hand signal? I don't get how that works. The Elder Sign also seems to be used to be protective, but keep the other meaning for the Yellow Sign in mind. Another quote from HealthyPlace.com, Thoughts and dreams attack the mind and invade the body as if the protective skin that normally contains our thoughts gives us space to breathe in between the thought and the thing being thought about and separates between inside and outside, past and present, me and you, was lost. It's possible that these symbols are being used to protect Weaver's mind, maybe even during his dreams. Perhaps something from the Dark Aether is reaching out and he's using these symbols to protect him from them. Finally, we see something next to the yellow sign. A lot of people have assumed this to be a name, like Harry, but I don't see it. What I see is the word har, an old English word for door, perhaps related to the portal drawing over Weaver's head. Alternatively, it could be something along the lines of liar, and we're just interpreting a second R where there isn't. The shot cuts to Strauss, easily looking the worst for wear as the poem reaches its crescendo. He says he can't take it anymore, and the shot cuts to Duffer, who smirks and plays some music. See, I told you the music would come back. Music is another way to distract yourself from torture, and I believe Duffer is doing this to keep Strauss on the edge, to keep him from shutting down, so he'll break harder later. The song that plays is Paradolia from Shangri-La, a song about dying as you think you see your friends watching. Quote from the song, It all ends so violently, I know, my sweet Paradolia. It all ends so painfully and slow. Look, if you thought you were gonna get me singing in this video, that's not gonna happen. This is why I said to keep the yellow sign in mind regarding self-destruction. We know these four die in Urzikstan sometime after 1996, and it's likely that they did it 
to themselves. So we'll see if these lyrics come back to bite them. We see the beloved Raptor One, who saved us time and time again during the events of Cold War, adjusting probably the best, likely because he's already been through this at the hands of Lev Kravchenko and William Peck during Mauer der Toten. Well, anything new to share? <laughs> Call sign, Raptor One, Captain, United, United States Air Force, service number FR-16, 9863-42, peace is our profession, but you can go fuck yourself. Next, our final playable character sneaks in, Maya Aguinaldo, a Filipino smuggler, and she cuts Duffer's neck. Two seconds of screen time. I already loved him. Interestingly, Maya's surname, Aguinaldo, is shared by the first president of the Philippines, Emilio Aguinaldo. The man was a large part of the Filipino Revolution in 1898, where they broke away from the Spanish Empire after roughly 333 years. Now, admittedly, the name is found in one out of every 5,255 people in the Philippines, so it could be unrelated. But if it's not, it could have to do with why her brother is being held captive on the island. Maya turns off the poem to Strauss's delight and frees the four of them. Weaver asks who she is and out steps our final reveal, Dr. William Peck. He states that breaking them out was his plan, keeping in line with his character as always needing to be the smartest in the room. When we last saw Peck, he was chartering a boat to this very island. If I'm wrong about Maya's heritage, perhaps the man Peck was talking to was Maya's brother, who somehow got trapped on the island trying to help Peck. Major Carver is the first to react before Peck grabs everyone's attention by stating their common enemy, Edward Richtofen. I love how you can feel the air freeze as Peck says it. They put some real respect on our boy's name. Now, Peck actually worked for Richtofen as a secret double agent during Cold War. Throwing Maxis into the dark ether at Outpost 25, Firebase Z, was even Richtofen's orders. Fun fact, Peck went by the codename Whiskers when speaking with Richtofen. I just thought you needed to know that. Apparently, Eddie stole Peck's work and likely sent him on the run for five years. Immediately after, a dimensional breach begins, and oddly, no one seems surprised. I see two possibilities for what's happening. Either Peck, who through Cold War story became an expert at opening Ethereum portals, started this as a distraction, or this is tied somehow to the events in Liberty Falls, the other launch map in Black Ops 6. We know they take place concurrently, and it's suspicious that two gates would open at the exact same time. Maya reveals that she's looking for her brother, and refuses to leave until she's found him. Raptor 1 says it'll take time to prepare the exfil, and Weaver tells Peck and Strauss to hole up in the guard tower where they can find Richtofen's coordinates. The remaining four move out to restore power and find Maya's brother, and that's where the map will begin. And that's all we have from this trailer. Now, we do have some information still coming from the truthdies.com, as well as some other sources across the web, and while I don't know if I'm going to make any more videos about those, there is also the new trailer coming out probably today, assuming I get this video out Thursday. We're going to be getting some gameplay of Terminus Island, and I'm looking forward to looking through that, but I don't know that it's going to be as detailed as this video. Aside from that, I also have some videos coming out about some of the older Call of Duty games. To preempt, I do streams every Thursday at 4pm, Friday at 6pm, and Sunday at 4pm, where I've been playing through not only the old Black Ops campaigns with Black Ops 1, 2, and Cold War, but I've been playing through a lot of the old Zombies maps, like Black Ops 2, Black Ops 4, and I've been doing some Modern Warfare Zombies. A lot of these are going to be turned into more digestible videos, edited down and sent out to you guys so you can watch them like that rather than the unedited streams. So you have all that to look forward to leading up to October. That said, I've grown a lot over the last year due to a lot of Helldivers content, and given I'm no longer doing that, I hope you aren't disappointed. If you were watching me for my Helldivers content, I hope you enjoy this new route that I'm taking, and I'm excited to take this journey with you. For those of you that are new, I hope you'll enjoy a lot of the stuff that I have planned to come out. I'm really looking forward to when Black Ops 6 comes out this October, and I hope that you guys will join me for it. Remember to be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.